are doing a rabbit search, and I hope you can hear it. So for those of you who don't know me, most of you do, but I have to know. I'm the Program and Outreach Coordinator here at the Chapman. Um, I'm so grateful you guys could join us tonight. If you didn't already know, and I can imagine most of you do, but June is LGBTQ plus Pride Month in the United States. It can never be Yes, in June 1969, known as the Stonewall Uprising, uh, and that sparked the modern day LGBTQ plus movement. Uh, during the month of June, millions of people celebrate with parties and parades and workshops, lectures, tonight, uh, concerts, and more. Uh, it's a month to celebrate, but also to honor those who have been lost along the way and to continue to advocate that LGBTQ rights are human rights. Uh, so tonight, we are very fortunate to have Pam Cardinelli with us. Uh, he uses the pronouns he, him. Uh, he's going to join us for a special Pride Month lecture. Cam grew up in South Lens Falls, and he is the current president of the Lower Adirondack Pride which is an LGBTQIA plus organization serving Warren, Washington, and Northern Saratoga counties. So I will turn it over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's me. Um, so I am Cam Cardinelli. As Becca said, um, I lead Lower Africa Pride. Um, we were actually founded in 2010 um, for the organization I uh, kind of fell off in, in 2013, and in 2023, I had this wild idea um, of let's host a Pride Festival. Um, we threw it together in just about 20 days, um, and we had over 1,500 people. Um, present day, 2024, we just wrapped up all of our June festivities. We had, I think, 18 events this month, um, so it's been, a, it's been a busy month. Um, of lots of great um, programming, support groups, events like these, and that kind of thing. As an organization, we serve Warren, Washington, Northern Saratoga counties. Last year, we was, we supported over 7,500 individuals. Um, wow. So the work we're doing is important, and we're, we're excited to continue on um, the mission of the organization as it was founded in 2010. Um, we are completely volunteer run. We have uh, a small board of five, but we're small but mighty and we get a lot done. Um, so that's kind of my overview. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about um, history and importance of pride. And the, the, the number one thing I always start with is this is meant to be more of a conversation. I don't like to just sit and talk to people. Um, so we'll go slide by slide. I overview and about 10 you know, key moments in LGBTQ history um, throughout the nation and some uh, locally here in the state. So conversate, let's have conversations. I want to hear your experiences. That kind of thing. I always start off with what is pride? Um, pride is an opportunity to celebrate diversity, uh, you know, take a moment to reflect on history. One thing I always like to say is, yes, we're here celebrating, but let's look at where we have to go. There's always more work to be done. Um, and, you know, we, unfortunately, human rights are, you, fortunately, human rights are, uh, you know, so key, but we have to continue that work to advocate for them. Um, a big thing is visibility and acceptance. It's a big thing our organization does. It's just, we're here um, and we're here to support you. So that's a big thing. Um, and then education and awareness. So these types of events are great. Um, so I'm going to talk about the history of Pride again. Talk back at me. Let's have a conversation. Um, so the movement of Pride started in 1924. Um, there was an organization founded called the Society for Human Rights. Uh, it was founded by Henry Gerber. Um, he was actually admitted into a mental hospital for his sexual orientation. This was America's first LGBTQ plus rights organization. So, yeah. Okay, 1924. Mm -hmm. Was he the only one put, because, put away because of his sexual orientation? There were hundreds. Uh, but he was the, you know, he came out of that hospital and started fighting. Oh. Yeah. Um, so moving to 1959, we had the first uprising. Um, this was at a popular gay meeting spot in Los Angeles. Um, police basically showed up and tried to arrest people for gathering very legally. Um, and it ended up with a uh, chase down the street. People were throwing coffee and donuts at the police officers. <laughs> <laughs> this really was the first riot as we know it. Uh, 
So this happened uh, a couple of years before Stonewall, um, but it, it, it was literally people running down the street. It closed Main Street in LA for, for a day because of this uprising. Um, but yeah, I can only imagine the scene of people chasing down the police uh, with coffee and donuts. <laughs> yes. What, what was the reason the police tried to arrest three people? What, what was there? Was there a movement? Yeah, it was that whole being gay is a mental illness. Oh. So that's really what propelled okay. and then the police just went after these individuals. Um, but there, this was, this spot in LA was the main well -known. meeting place um, for about 20 years. Um, and actually, I was in LA for a conference a couple months ago and was able to visit this this scene. And it's there's memorials and all that kind of thing. So that's the first uprising. Um, about 10 years later, we move into the Stonewall riots, which most people know about. Uh, that's really a, a key historical marker within the LGBTQ plus movement. Um, so on June 28th, the nine police men uh, entered the Stonewall Inn which was a gay bar in uh, Greenwich Village and took several patrons um, into custody. Um, and this was this one, instead of mental illness, as they stated, was gender appropriate clothing. So this is where we saw the first, you know, they've become icons in current day of drag, um, as well as trans individuals. Um, this riot lasted for five days. I never knew the reason. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. But wow. Yeah. So this is uh, really where that the the drag uh, community. This was their hangout spot. Okay. Um. There was. Uh, so I, I could each one of these historical markers. I could speak for hours on. Um. But this was their meeting space, and it was there was a great story about a hole in the wall. And that's where you, you entered um, to enter this like, drag village, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, in 1969, that was the beginning of the first part of the anti-war protest. Yes. Was there a kind of coalition or bringing together of anti-war protesters, the people who were supporting the rights? Yes. Yeah, they were unified. Yep. Um, so that's the Stonewall riots. Again, this is a huge historical marker within. Yeah. Do you know when that New York State law um, for anyone not wearing gender appropriate clothing went into effect? Um, it was, I think it's kind of always, it was always the thing. Um, and I believe it started out of the ideology of like more uniforms. Uh, okay, so it had always been there, and now they're just enforcing it in ways yeah. that they choose. Correct. <laughs> they saw this new way to enforce a law yeah. and jumped right out. Yeah. But what if you lived on a farm? What if men and women were the same clothing on a farm? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then we move into 1978. This is a, another big year for pride related initiatives, obviously, over the last nine um between 69 and 78 there was uh, more uprisings more riots that kind of thing um the first pride flag was designed by gilbert baker um who was a huge um, icon within the gay rights movement um and this first flew during the san francisco pride parade um really interesting most people don't know the meaning of a pride flag um, so the hot pink is for sexuality, red for life, orange for healing, yellow for the sun, green for nature, turquoise blue for art, indigo for harmony, and violet for spirit. Um, we've seen, uh, now we have four different nationally recognized pride flags. Um, so we started with just the, the five colors of the rainbow, and then we moved into adding um, blue and, or I'm sorry, yes, blue, pink, and white. Um, and then we saw the black and brown come in, and then the yellow and the blue circle. So currently, current day, that is the nationally recognized flag. Um, some states haven't adopted that, but um, organizations like the Human Rights Campaign are constantly going to states and asking them to remove this policy. 
Oh, is, that, is that the flag that's flying by sitting? It is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was a huge marker for us here in Glens Falls. Uh, if you don't know, mm -hmm. we were fighting oh. for a pride flag to fly, um, and we won after a year and a half. So that was a big moment. Um, and our organization, to step away from history for just a second, we uh, this year also launched an initiative to uh, supply flags to businesses. Uh, so we are 25 within Glens Falls, Queensbury, um, and Stevens, Florida, Washington County. Um, so yes, and we are flying a new inclusion flag. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. And you call it the inclusion flag. Yep. And was there any pride in that of the San Francisco payment? What was that? Was uh, there any riding against them for that? Or there was. There was. Attack? Yeah, there was a, a group of people, you know, having this parade and equal or more individuals fighting against this parade. Yeah, it was this, they don't officially call it a riot, but it turned into a, mm -hmm. a pretty messy situation. Yeah. Um, and then we moved into 1981, the AIDS epidemic. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I've, I lost nine family members because of the AIDS epidemic. Um, so this one hits close to home. Um, it's a major global health challenge. It's, it's still going on. Luckily, there's now uh, prevention and uh, medication for treatment. Um, and about 86 million individuals have been affected since then. Um, and again, this particularly um, affects the gay community. Do you know how many people died? Um, I don't know that I'm wrong off the top of my head. Because it has to be, if 86 million have been infected, yeah. I wonder if there are more that died than actually died. So 86 million is the total number. Um, oh, part, okay. Yeah. So some of them died. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there was, it was, um, there's, again, I can do a presentation on this. This is another our portion of our organization that we're constantly uh, advocating for is the awareness of oh, yeah. prevention and treatment. Yeah. So that's the AIDS epidemic. Again, it hit many people close to home. Uh, so that's pretty mm -hmm. I had a lot of coworkers who died. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and those high spots, or those, uh, you know, high, uh, population cities, it was you know, devastating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's very scary and devastating. Yes. Um, so in 1987, um, the APA, uh, which is the American Psychiatric Association, uh, revised its DSM to make being gay no longer a mental disorder. So people were being arrested, people were being admitted into the um, mental hospitals, people were being killed for being gay because people saw it as literally a mental disorder. Um, and then in 1987, this was removed completely. Um, and they also kind of added in that transgender uh, protection as well for individuals. Um, yeah, that is the ideology, or that's the terminology that we used in 1987. Okay. Um, and if you, when you look back at DS, the copies of the DSM, um, that is literally what it said. Even following 1987, that's what it stated, because um, the, the terminology then switched to protect um, gender identity disorders. <laughs> disorders. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and then in 1990, it, it, the, okay. the, yep, it was no longer a disease. So we went from both being a mental disorder and a disease, we dropped um, mental disorder, and then we dropped um, being a disease in 1990. Um, this ideology came out of the fact that there was an assumption that every gay person had AIDS. <laughs> so everyone had a disease. Um, so the World Health Organization removed homosexuality from the International Classification of Diseases. Um, many parades, many celebrations. Um, and, and this was really kind of the first time that we saw these celebrations happening without rioters. Mm. 
just by you know those updates of removing the disease and the medical disorder, it 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 formed some sort of understanding. Yeah. Um, and they had successful parades and um, yeah. Um, so in 1998, um, the Employment Discrimination Executive Order was placed. Mm -hmm. um, so present day, that is very illegal. Unfortunately, we still see it happen right here in our own community. Um, we've probably had 15 cases over the last year um, of individuals not being hired because of their sexuality, how they dress, um, and that kind of thing. Um, so in, in the executive order, we saw this completely taken out, but this did not extend to the military. Um, so yeah. you had to hide in the military. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, this is something we're, we're still fighting locally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In 1990, uh, we also saw the first Trans Day of uh, Remembrance. It's now Trans Day of uh, vis Visibility and Remembrance. Um, we we do them separate. Our organization does, uh, just because they they mean two different things. One is you know looking back and remembering that history and educating yourself on what that history means, and then looking forward to celebrating that visibility. Um, so the this these days were really formed out of all the trans individuals who were killed um, be, because of these anti-transgender organizations. Um, back in that day, there were more anti-transgender organizations than uh, trans organizations who were supporting individuals. Um, so this was the first Trans Day of Remembrance, and again, lots of parties, lots of celebrations. Um, to celebrate the success that they've had um, while also still remembering those that they've lost. So there are some transgender support groups though? And... There were. There were a couple organizations. There were many more, or there were, you know, so many more anti and that point. Um, but there, there were organizations kind of for that. And are they increasing in number? Present day? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah, uh, it kind of formed into there's just umbrella organizations. So, mm -hmm. you know, Lower Rider Pride is a great example of one. We support anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some specific uh, trans organizations. Good. Yes. Um, in 2004, we saw the same sex marriage take place. Um, this was. Um, no, Gavin knew he was aware. California. Yep. Yeah, so um, it was Del Martin and Phyllis and Maya, and these uh, two individuals were incredible activists. Um, and it happened with the mayor and the city clerk, and it was a huge celebration in San Francisco. Um, San Francisco is still seen as like a gay mecca of the world. Um, <laughs> They have more um, LGBTQ identifying individuals and they have um, straight individuals, which is um, just so cool to see. Um, so yeah, this was the first same-sex marriage. Moving into 2015, same-sex marriage was legalized everywhere in the United States. Um, the US Supreme Court shut down all the state bans on same-sex marriage. Um, which still stands today. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> moving into present day, um, there are roughly 400 pride organizations um, per region in the state. So there are nine region or er, per region in the country. So there's nine regions recognized um, throughout the National Pride Organization. Um, so we all fall into one of them. So we have many different pride organizations. They all have a little bit of a different mission, but they're all dedicated to supporting the same um, group of individuals. Um, here locally, we had our festival last, not last weekend, oh my goodness, it felt yeah. like last weekend, <laughs> uh, at the beginning of this month. Uh, we had about 5,000 people attend this year versus 1,500 last year. So we've 
Uh, that event has grown so much. I'm not sure where we're going next year. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the event. Uh, there was there were a couple of pride parades uh, and festivals held here in the city um, in in former years, uh, and they were actually held in Crandall Park. Um, in like the very back of the <laughs> um, So we've taken the the change um, and we've made it like the most public event that weekend in Glens Falls. Um, and we had uh, an estimated economic impact of $550,000. So we had a crazy weekend. Um, and we continue to host support groups. So we host support groups. Uh, we have two different ones. One is for 18 and over, and then we also have a youth support group. Um, they fill up in about two minutes. Um, so we're looking to continue that, move into some of the clinical side of things, uh, supporting individuals one-on-one. -on -one. What about for younger people? Yeah, we have a youth support group. Okay. Yeah, so. I mean, you, I mean really young. Yeah, we have one uh, currently that's like 12 to 17. Um, and then we also do school programming and that kind of Oh, good. Yep. Yeah. So we go into the schools, um, you know, throughout health, health classes have formed over the years, and now we're we're teaching about, um, you, you know, safety within the community. So it's it's something we are constantly working on is supporting our youth. Um, we have two, you know, every LGBTQ individual within our community is vulnerable in one way or another. Um, our two most uh, community groups are our youth, our young people, and uh, older adults. So uh, those are two groups that we are really focused on, making sure they are, you know, stay in our community and can thrive. Are you talking about in all when you say older adults? How old? Um, like sixty-five plus. Really? Because they've been. Closeted so yeah, long. They have the highest rates. Um, yes. It's youth and then uh, seniors. Older wow. Adults have the highest rates of suicide. That is one, you know, that's our, our biggest area that we serve as youth. Mm -hmm. um, in the last year, we've processed over 900 referrals. Wow. Um, and I would I would have to guess 75% of those are youth. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, they we got a better one for less than here. Yes. 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 Glens Falls, for the most part, um, you know, the, our three counties, really, mm -hmm. compared to some of the stories. So I sit on the statewide board um, for LGBTQ plus organizations, um, and then I also sit on the national board. So we hear stories out of like South, South, South that are like just devastating. Um, so we're, in, in some way, we are lucky where we are, um, and we're happy to you know keep supporting these individuals. Because and really, our one of our goals is to um, you know support these these young people and keep them here. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, we, we see a lot of young people move out of town and never return. Um, so that's really one of our big focuses: mm -hmm. making sure they know they're welcome here. They don't have to go away to San Francisco. Absolutely. Or New York City. Some of them of our age went and never came back. Yeah. We can save in touch. Yeah. Well, you have a very purposeful driven life. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. I, you know, I, I love what I do um, in both my, my career and um, pride on the side. So it's a, it's a great life and I'm, I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing. And we've got a good group behind us of supporters and that's it. So, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I I I just think it's so crucial what you said about saving lives. To mm -hmm. me, that's that's I don't know, that's tremendous. That's yeah. I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, that's you know, we're not a crisis organization. Um that is not something we really promote. Um I, when we first founded this organization, refounded, that was like my first thing. It's like, somebody needs to know how to intervene in this situation. So yeah. um, I went to a week long intensive um, where you literally are put through these situations um, with people who have plans and it's real life conversations. 
um, and you come out of that like prepared, um, you will never be ready to handle your first intervention, but they get, um, you, you know, it's, it's a national certification. So we are, um, it all, you know, we're, we're kind of always intercepting. Our, our thing is we don't want people to find us when it's too late. So having these events, having these advocacy, um, you know, committees and that kind of thing is, is so important. Yeah. And, and having our organization being a sense of belonging for people. Yeah. Yeah. And then is there the professional help that they need in the area? Or Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, we're seeing just within the last couple of months, um, well, not eight months ago, we had a lot of our uh, mental health professionals completely booked. Um, within the last six months, we've gained some more mental health professionals. Oh. Um, and we're, we're getting back on track and making sure everyone has that, um, that support. So right. we're at the point now where we've got everything we need for the most part here locally. Um, there were, it was a time about a year and a half ago when people, you know, they had no other option but drive to all of it twice a week yeah. for, for therapy and that kind of intervention. So. And doesn't have some ones in the Yes, they do. Yep, gender and right care. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's a, uh, I think she's a nerd practitioner, maybe, but uh, Jen Wright is her name. We sent so many referrals her way, um, so we keep her busy with it. Our folks, but yeah, that's that's my story. That's pride. Um, again, I could go into each one of these topics for hours and hours, but I um, just want to give you a, a general overview. Um, Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What are ways that organizations in the community can better support the LGBTQ plus community? Yes. The chat is just doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> you can clarify year round. I know. Yeah, you're one of the. You gotta get the update. I know that. I know. I'll get you one if you want one. Yeah. 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 Um, just that general reminder of like we are a safe space. Um, that is really a great way. Um, we're launching an initiative within the next couple of months. Um. To kind of be like indicated as a safe space. Um, so we'll have a directory on our website. You'll have a sticker in your window, um, and we'll just keep creating these safe spaces. Um, safe spaces, you know, I could say that word a thousand times because um, they are so important to have. Yeah. Whether it be a coffee shop, uh, an attraction, a, a museum, schools, that kind of thing. Um, so really just focusing on creating those spaces. Yeah, there was a sign circulating, all are welcome here yeah. in many languages. And yeah. I think it has colors. I think it, it has. does. Yeah, so yeah. that's an initiative through Mount Souls Hospitals DEI Committee, who we work closely with. Um, it's kind of a natural uh, relationship that yeah, formed yeah. in the very beginning. They were my first call. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, they, they have that, but we're, we're going to make it, um, you know, hopefully reach some more people yeah. with, with our directory and stickers. Have you been invited to speak at like teacher professional days for the teachers? Yep. Yeah, I do a whole curriculum. It's a eight hour curriculum on wow. supporting students uh, within your schools. Good. Yeah, so that's something we do a lot. Um, and we partner a lot with like the National Human Rights Campaign to create that content and get that content. Right. Wow, so yeah. we'll look for your website. And, yeah. Uh, We'll talk it up among our old friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come to an event. All of our um, events are all ages. Um, it's something we really promote. Um, is you know you could be in middle school and come to our events, um, and an older adult to our events. All are welcome at any point. So mm -hmm. yeah, we have a lot of um, our events mainly consist of social events. Um, so we're actually, I have to announce this um, tomorrow on social, but you're the first to know, we're doing a big pride disco at um, the Golden Bucky. Um, it's over on South Street, it's the new like lounge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're doing like a big disco there. We do a lot of, um, we're getting more into the community education as well. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just want to thank you for Tonight, for 
all the work you did to get you. the pride flag the, up at City Hall, all the work you do in this community. I mean, the you. old ladies, we, we, we knew what it was like in the old days yes. and the history that we showed, but history had been changed that much. And there's so much work to do. And you are just such a fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Human being, just to be normal and loving, kind. Thank you. And healing. Thank you. And, and, uh, so thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. But when did you think that this would happen in Glens Falls? <laughs> I didn't live in Glens Falls that long, but I don't think I could have lived here long enough to see it happen. <laughs> but then I met this guy <laughs> years ago, and I said, it's going to be tomorrow. <laughs> 20 days. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Of thank course. You. Thank you all for coming. It was great to meet all of you. Did you say 